Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome back to our YouTube channel once again. And it is my hope and prayer that this video is actually going to find you guys in good health. Personally, I am fine as you can see. Kisumu is also fantastic. And maybe you could also let me know where you are watching the video from. The county or the country in case you are out of the republic. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to begin this video by asking you guys some two quick questions. You can either choose to answer them or ignore. But I really love to read your answer. The first question. Are there plans to extend William Ruto's stay in office? I'm asking this question because two, two months after William Ruto was sworn into office, Fafi member of parliament, that, is, uh, that was I think it was in November 2022, Fafi member of parliament, Salah Yukub, caused a huge political storm in Kenya by proposing to remove the term limit from our constitution and instead introduce another proposal based on age. And I think he was proposing that we remove the term limit but cap it on age. And his proposal was that, was it 70? Most people interpreted that to mean that was a strategy to lock Kalonzo and Raila Odinga out of the presidential race in 2000, probably in 2027, or 2032. So that was two months after Ruto became the president. Farouk Kibet supported. But William Ruto, for those who remember, came out publicly to denounce any such thoughts. But of course, the moment he denied it, that was the moment I knew they were testing waters. In fact, what Salah Yukub's uh, proposals were supposed to achieve was that they wanted to test the reaction of Kenyans. Kenyans really opposed that. Now, the second question, which is very important, and maybe all of you now should answer it. Is there anything that can actually stop William Ruto from changing the constitution to remove the presidential term limit? Is there anything? Have you really studied William Ruto's history? For me, I don't think there is anything that can actually stop Ruto if he wants to do that. He can easily do it. You go back to his history. William Ruto first contested as a member of parliament for Eldoret North in 1997. He faced one of the senior guys there, Chesire. Against all odds, he defeated Chesire. From that time up to now, William Ruto has never lost any political contest, save for the no, remember the no, the, the bananas and oranges. That one he lost. But Ruto also made history as the first presidential candidate to contest for the presidency and actually managed to succeed. He defeated a combined force of Uhuru Kenyatta and Raila Liga who were actually sitting on the throne. So I don't think there's anything that can stop Ruto. Because changing the constitution to remove the term limit is one of the easiest things. It can be done through two ways. The first way is by securing two-thirds of the support of senators and members of parliament. Do you think Ruto cannot get two-thirds support from parliament? It's a very tall order. But I want you to focus in 2027. Because Ruto is keen on having that absolute majority in his second term. So that is the first. The second one, you can do it through a referendum, which is very difficult. Because in a referendum, it means Kenyans will be subjected to vote. And as we all know for sure, as you all know for sure, is that as things stand today, if a referendum were to be conducted, Kenyans would definitely vote no. It's, it's a bit difficult, but don't rule it out. But are there plans to really remove the presidential term limit, if you ask me? If you ask me their plans, 
and I'm going to give you the signs and why these proposals are being made. Before we do that, for those who are watching this channel for the first time, please take a second or two, click that subscribe button so that next time we produce a video like this, YouTube will automatically notify you. And to the subscribers, I want to continue thanking you guys for your continued support. And for this particular video, please just press that thumbs up button and drop your comment. Now, we now have two proposals to extend the term of William Ruto in office. The first one came from the guy I've just explained, the Fafi member of parliament, Salah Yakub. His proposal is simple. Let's remove the term limit, cap it at 75, then people waende waende wakienda. The latest came from the Nandi senator, Samson Cherargei. Who is Samson Cherargei? He's one of the close allies of William Ruto. And because personally, I believe that in politics, nothing happens out of mere coincidence and that everything in politics is normally well planned, well scripted and executed to achieve specific political objectives. Let me remind you of something that happened some two weeks ago. William Ruto made a trip to, to UDA party headquarters. While William Ruto was at UDA party headquarters, he stayed there for six good hours. One of the few members of parliament who accompanied him was none other than the Nandi senator. Samson Chiraragil. I, I mean, what was his role there? And then from nowhere, we are being told that the National Dialogue Committee received a petition from Samson Chiraragil. So, in my view, those plans are there. And let me now take you to signs why I strongly believe those signs are actually there. The first sign is the push by William Ruto to have a mega political party. William Ruto is, is pushing all political parties in Kenya Kwanza to join together. Then they'll contest as a single party. The effect of that is that there's a chance, for example, if you look at the presidential, I mean the parliamentary elections, there's a chance that in one or two constituencies, maybe UD candidate lost because they sponsored ANC or for Kenya. Just like ODM lost some consequences because there was a wiper there, there was a MDG here. That is exactly what William Ruto is trying to cure. He wants to have that mega party. We go for election. Then he will ensure that through that process, the mega party will have absolute majority. Then once he's sworn in in second term, then they execute the plan. So that's, that's the first sign. The second sign is basically the judiciary. Why do you think William Ruto is keen on putting judiciary in his pocket? Because he wants the judiciary to actually rule in his favor in most of the cases. If you remember the BBI, why do you think the, the court threw out BBI? They talked of public participation, lack of it. While we know so well that public participation was there during the BBI. Rael Udinga, Azimio moved around the country, talking about BBI. In fact, even Weta was there, Mudavari was there. So the judiciary was used to thwart it. He doesn't want a situation where he will fall for that. So William Ruth is now taking charge of the judiciary. I doubt if the judiciary will, can go to bed with uh, Raila instead of Ruto. I don't think. So that's the second sign. The third sign is the system. You know, Uru Kenyatta had the system, but he really didn't control it. The guy who controlled part of the system was none other than Ruto. But Ruto is now in charge, which means he's fully taken charge of the system. And if you want to understand that, you just need to look at the appointments that William Ruto has been making of late. They are geared to serve some political interests. So he now has the, the system. The system will ensure that if you want signatures to be collected, if you need MPs to be sorted out, the system will do it. But the last sign is the push by Farouk Ibet, push by Salah Yaqub, and now Cherar Gay. And the, 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 the new proposal by Cherar Gay is actually very sweet. Let me explain how and why it is sweet. 
and is suggesting that they put it in uh, the dialogue team. Okay? So the proposal is that they're going to have seven year term. Now, one, seven year, that's one term. Two term, seven years, that's for T. That's what they're proposing. And then they're also proposing that they should have the office of the prime minister who will be sitting in parliament. In that case, we have the office of Muslim everybody being considered, coordinating ministries being, being there. And they're also proposing that to have the an uh, of official opposition leader who will uh, be fully funded by the state, maybe and the deputies. So that is supposed to entice the opposition leaders. So Kanozo will figure out we are going to have a, the official opposition leader funded by the government. I'm going to be maybe the deputy or something like that. So it's a very good proposal. And why are they targeting it now? The truth is, this is the good, it's a good opportunity for them. And Gerarge is suggesting that they want to extend seven years because according to them, seven years is a good opportunity for anybody to really implement their manifesto. And I find the joke there. Every time you want to succeed and you come to manifesto, even if you are given two years, you should be able to implement it. Kenyans go to the poll every five years. Five years is enough for anybody to implement. But Gerard Gay is now giving an excuse because one year is already gone. Ruta has done nothing. We are second year is likely going. But he's saying they need that, that opportunity. And also he wants to address, use it to address the perennial electoral challenge. So in my view, the plans are actually there. But the question, can Ruto succeed? Now let us look at why they are proposing the term. What are some of the motivating factors to remove the term limit? Number one, age factor. If you look at William Ruto, he's still very young. You know, if people could say that Uru was young and Uru was going nowhere. Now what do you think are in the minds of uh, William Ruto supporters? That Ruto is now has taken, uh, has, has completed one year, four years to go. If he succeeds, then another four, five years, that's nine years. They can't, they can't accept it. So they must push for Ruto to continue staying, even if it's by four years, the one that Chirarge is saying. The second thing is the fear of the revenge. You know, karma is normally said to be a what? <laughs> the truth is, is going to catch up with Ruto. After 10 years, assuming he serves two terms, he will be an ordinary Kenyan. A new president will come in office. Maybe the new president will ask him questions. Why he harassed Uru Kenyatta? Why this happened? Why this happened under his watch? Probably will be asked those questions. And there's that fear. It's why he wants to extend to stay longer. I'm also sure the pressure from supporters. They want Ruto to continue. And probably Kenya Kwanza have realized that there is some low-hanging fruits that the bipartisan team is uh, offering. So they're now using the, the platform to also push what is in, actually in their mind. And of course, you also know that it's actually a disruptive politics strategy to disrupt politics by diverting the attention of the country from the real issues. Currently in Kenya, we have real issues that are affecting common monarchy. Term limit is not one of them. But now we are discussing it because they want us to forget about the real issues. I don't know what to think. That's my take. Thank you guys and may you have a good day. Bye-bye.